Hey guys, so in this video I want to do some more analyzing of functions. I'm going to write the summation function. I'm going to write two different summation functions. So first off, let's go ahead and create our main. And let's see, return zero. Okay. Now I'm going to actually create the summation function. If you guys don't know, um, a summation, let me put an example here. Um, the summation from, let me see, summation from 1 to 5 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. And let's see, that is equal to 3, 6, 10, 15. So um, summation, example 2 actually, and then we'll say summation from 1 to 3 is going to be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is equal to 6. And let's see, example 3. The summation from 1 to some number we'll call it n is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus, and I'll put dots for all of the numbers in the middle, and it'd be plus n minus 1, and then plus n. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this summation function. Uh, First one, I call it sum. Uh, well, yeah, sum, sum will work. And sum will take in an integer value called n, and it's going to sum every number up to n. So let's go ahead and create this function. And this function, let's see, we're going to have an integer i. We're going to do a for loop. Actually, before we do it for, let's also create the sum, and we're gonna make the value equal to zero. And sum is gonna go from i equals one. Um, so i is gonna be less than or equal to the value n, and then i is gonna increment each time. And then what we're going to do is sum is going to equal sum plus i. And then when we're done, we're going to return sum. OK, so that's our first summation. And now let's create another uh, summation function. I'm going to call it summation. It's going to also take in the integer value n. And let's create this one. And what this is going to do, this is going to uh, return n times n plus 1, and then all of this divided by 2. And I hope I don't have any uh, floating issues here, floating point issues. So let's print f the summation from 1 to percent D equals percent D and let's do backslash in and what are those percent D's going to be let's see we're going to create another call uh, another variable integer n and we're going to set n equal to 5 so for um, the summation from 1 to n, in this case is 5, 1 to 5, should be equal to sum of n. Let's 
let's give this a run. Let's save it as a dot C. I'm gonna call it summation. Uh, well, let's call it analyzing summation function. Okay, so one the summation from 1 to 5 is equal to 15, like we had in our example up there, which is good. So let's try another small sample, 3. Summation from 1 to 3 is equal to 6. So we see that our summation function here is working. Now let's try this other summation function. And let's see if it too is working, like we expect it to. Okay, so the summation from 1 to 3 equals 6. And let's try 5. Uh, the summation from 1 to 5 is equal to 15. So good. Um, so we have these two functions. So which one is, uh, I want to say better, but which one has the faster running time? And it should be immediately simple to see that this one here has the fastest running time. It's a constant time. And this one here's running time is big O of n. So how do we see this? Well, let's see. The summation from 1 to percent d, let's change this up a little bit. I'm going to copy this. Actually, I'm not going to copy it. The summation from 1 to percent d's, we're going to say running time equals, and for this one, we're going to return how many times it um, uh, is, how many times this function is being called. So I'm going to just comment this out, and this time I'm going to return 1 because this function is being called only one time. And here, I'm going to put a count, probably put up here. I'm going to set count equal to uh, zero. And what we're going to do is, every time count goes through here, we're going to increment count by one, so count plus plus. And then we're going to return count instead of sum. And put sum here. Okay, so let's see the running time for the summation function. So for input size of 5, the running time is 1. Let's change 5 to some big number like 100. And we'll see the input size for the summation is still, the, the running time I mean, is 1 and the input size is 100. So this is, this, this summation function here runs in constant time. Um, let's try the other function. It's called sum. So we run that. And for the summation from 1 to 100, with emphasize being 100, the running time is 100. Let's try 5. And we see that the running time is 5. So we can see from these few examples that the running time is uh, big O of n for this one. And the running time here is big O of 1. All right. So um, thank you, guys. Uh, please leave likes. Please subscribe. I plan on putting some more videos up on um, analyzing algorithms and functions. So see you guys next time.